Is there any particular reason the graded problem is sideways? Mm -hmm. Huh? Oh, sometimes if you just open the PDF, if you don't actually go into Word and open it, it'll bring on your image. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it still works. <laughs> yes, it does, but gravity is really messed up. Yeah. So a graded problem, right? We had these two doohickeys like this. We had a pole. And then we had this. Yeah, no, I'm going to take a more specific one, but I'm just going to draw it because I like drawing. And I think these were maybe, uh, where's A? This one? No, this one? Is this B? This is C. Batten. O for three. So what's your specific question, Brendan? Just a sec. So I see that both of the, the A, B, and the B, C are both two force numbers. Yeah, A, B, and B, C are two force. So I yeah. treat them both like two force numbers. Mm -hmm. I, could, I kept getting solved in the completed one. Mm -hmm. That's what my calculator. Interesting. So I went back to it like we did in class, and I said the cable is a two force number, and I just did force of X, force of Y, and A. Yeah. And that worked better. So I was like, there's still three equations, three unknowns. That's fine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So Brendan's saying that when he solved it by identifying both of these as two force members, that you ended up getting false. And so you switched and said, well, let's make this one have some a sub x and some a sub y and then this one we'll just call tcb and then you solved it and that's fine okay. yeah. it's kind of unrelated but related if you post the graded problem as a pdf it, my desktop doesn't have word and so i can't open it on my desktop uh, i'll see if i can i don't know yeah but it doesn't instill tons of confidence but i'll give it a shot yeah. You can. Yeah, you can get Microsoft Office for free through the college. Yeah. I don't know the details, but it sounds like Paul might. Which is pretty slick. Yeah. I had it on my old computer. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Maybe not about the graded problem? About just homework problems you tried? Did you try any homework problems? Vlad, I'm looking at you. Mm, he's not looking at me. How was my weekend? My weekend was... My week, you know, I am absolutely exhausted, but it's been an awesome weekend. We had some friends from our trip to the Arctic Ocean that we met along the way. They're from Denmark. They've been staying with us for a week, and that was really fun. They have a really cute dog, and my wife doesn't like dogs at all, but because they were our guests, the dog got to come inside, and so I was pretty stoked about that. This like dogs? Huh? She's allergic, so, you know, I can kind of understand, but whatever. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> okay, this is neither here nor there. So why don't you pass your graded problems to the end? I'll pick them up and I'll hand out the quiz. Okay. Never thought of that. After all, we're, we're all teachers. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. Here we go. So, <clears throat> free body oh. diagram is the first thing we always do when we're solving a problem. Okay. As an engineer. When you get in an argument with your significant other, I want you to sit down and I want you to draw a free body diagram. I'm not saying that's going to be a good idea. They may not like you at all for that. Okay? Be very careful with how you draw your free body diagrams when solving relationship issues. So, <clears throat> free body diagram. <laughs> that's Travis, exactly right. Here's the tension created by you, right? Here's the tension created on me by my job, right? Oh, this is good. We could go a long ways with this. Maybe we should guest lecture in a psychology class together. About oh, seriously? 
Okay, Jordan just said not parking the car correctly. Have have you do you have tension with people over that? Just a little bit? Oh, it's been a significant source of marital tension in my life. My wife <laughs> refuses to park in her spot. It's the worst. I suppose if that's the worst thing you can complain about in your marriage, you're probably doing okay. But no, no, that just means good. Okay. <laughs> All right. So A, what's happening at A? What type of connection do we have? Single force straight up, right? Yep. So we're going to have a normal at A. How about at B? What types of forces do we have at B? An X and a Y. Why is that, Rebecca? Because it's a pin. It's a pin. So we've got some BY. BX and hopefully not any BO. Okay. Wow. I'm here all week, folks. How are we going to simplify these forces? Shapes. Shapes, right? I'm going to divide it into two a triangle and a rectangle, right? So the rectangle looks like it's 400 newtons per meter times 3 meters is going to give me 1200 newtons that will be located right about there, right? at 1.5 meters. And the triangle is going to give me 400 times 3, 1,200, divided by 2, which is 600, lo located 1 third, 2 thirds. So it's going to be 2 off the end, and it's going to be 600, right? OK. Everybody have if you if you have a free body diagram like this, give it go ahead and give yourself five points right now. Okay? All right. If we overlaid that on the original picture, does that Okay, I'll let it slide since it's a quiz and it's a time crunch and you only had 137 seconds left. Fine. Okay. If you drew it on the actual picture, but you got all these pieces in there, I'm happy. You, congratulations, you do a free body diagram. Okay. So then what did you do? Sum the forces in the X and the Y, right? So I'm going to sum the forces in the X. I'm going to say to the right is positive, and they all have to sum up to zero. So it looks to me like BX is zero. Congratulations. Okay. Now let's do some of the forces in the Vi. Okay. What acts in the Y direction? It looks like we have NA minus 1200 minus 600 plus BY equals zero. How am I deciding on what, whether they're positive or negative? I'm looking at my arrow the way I've drawn it. And I'm saying, does it match my sign convention of up being positive? Yes, this one does, so it's positive. No, this one doesn't, so it's negative. No, negative. Yes, positive. Okay. Now let's sum our moments. Anybody choose a particularly awesome point that they're fond of using for summing the moments? B. Sure. We could use A too, right? Doesn't really matter, but let's let's do B. Sounds like lots of people use B. In general, the more forces that go through the point, the better the point is. So if we choose B, it looks like we'll have 600 times 2, positive or negative? Negative. Mm. But look at my oh, sign convention. Positive. It's positive because if I pin it here and push, it twists in the way I've said is positive. So it's going to be positive 600 times 2 plus 1,200 times, I think that's 3.5. Minus, <coughs> yeah, it's four and a half. You're right. Because it's one and a half plus one mm -hmm. plus two. Gives you four and a half. Yep. Uh, minus NA times six. That's got to equal zero. So it looks like we can solve for NA in this equation as being a number. Anybody solve for NA? Excuse me? 1100? Newton meters? No, Newtons. Okay. 
So if Na is 1,100 newtons, we can substitute that back in here and find that By is 700, I think, right? Okay. If you boxed these, made them nice and pretty, then that would be a full 10 points. All right. Questions on the quiz? Oakley Doakley. Go ahead and pass them in to the end. I would like you to put a grade on it. Yes. Yes, please. We're going to go ahead and start chapter six now after that awesome quiz. Okay. And chapter six is all about uh, structural analysis. Doesn't that sound legit? To, to quit, definitely. Okay. Structural analysis, and we start that by looking at trusses. Okay. Trusses are freaking amazing. Okay. They're really, really, really cool. Great application of engineering. Uh, you likely have trusses in your house. You don't see them very often though. Where do we see trusses? Bridges. Did you say Costco? Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Right? Lots of Costco's have trusses in them. Scaffolding. Scaffolding, it would depend. Most scaffolding isn't. It's actually simple beams yeah. usually. Yeah. Um, but essentially, anything where you have a bunch of triangles to make something strong. So the typical one that you're going to see in this class a lot is the train bridge, right? So if we go to downtown Portland, right, there's a bunch of bridges. And a simply supported bridge could be something like this, okay? And we, we solve this using truss analysis. And maybe we'd put some loads on it. When we're doing truss analysis, so we're going to start with trusses. In trusses, we are going to assume all loads are carried at joints. Okay. So is this actually what happens on your roof? Right, so a roof truss typically would look something like this. Right, if you go in the attic of your house and it was built after, oh, I'd say 1970, you're going to have something that looks like this in the roof probably. Okay, and these are two by fours. Um, but does this, and kind of there's a wall here usually and a wall here. Typically, your house has walls on it. Um, does it look to you like all of the load is carried just at the joints? No, it's not, right? Because we would put roofing on this, okay? And then it would snow, right? And then on the inside, we'd probably put some sheetrock on the bottom here. And then we'd hang a really gaudy chandelier, right? Maybe something nice and gold and, you know, woo, right? Really heavy, right? And then we'd have our hammock chair over here. Authentic hippies, right? We're going to be, trust me, by the end of today, you're going to be convinced that all engineers are hippies, okay? And... <clears throat> <laughs> yes, if you came over to my house, this is exactly what you would see. A gaudy chandelier and a hammock chair. And two feet of snow on the roof all year. What's that? Only on one side of the roof. No. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, um, not exactly how it happens. On a bridge, though, we can make a better case for this. Because if I make this, uh, maybe I'll make this a three-dimensional drawing, right? Like that. 
then what we could do is we could have beams that tie the two sides of the bridge together. Right? Here. And then we could run the load carrying members that you actually drive across this way. So if you're on this, these beams would carry the load to this beam, which then would tie it into the truss. So, okay, we could, we could make that assumption here and that would be okay. All right? But for now, in this class, we're going to say when we look at a truss, all the forces are applied at the joints. So I'm going to draw my bridge again. I'm going to draw lots of bridges today. Okay. We're going to say it's simply supported, so it's got a pin on one end and a roller on the other. And then maybe I could apply a load here, and I could apply a load here. I could not apply a load right there. Okay, so we're just saying the joints. The joints being where multiple members meet each other. Okay. So the um, the key to solving these problems is to believe that if we want the entire bridge to stay in static equilibrium then all of the parts of the bridge will stay in static equilibrium. Okay, So if we want the bridge to stay in static equilibrium, then all of the parts will stay in static equilibrium. So that means that this guy's in static equilibrium, this guy's in static equilibrium, that guy's in static equilibrium. What does that mean? When I say static equilibrium, what does that make you think in your head now? Net force is equal to zero. Right? Some of the forces equals zero. Right? That's exactly what I want you to be thinking when I say static equilibrium. You say the sum of the forces is equal to zero, meaning it's not accelerating anywhere. So that means if I label this A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, sum of the forces has to equal zero. C, D, sum of the forces has to equal zero. Right? All of these, the sum of the forces has to equal zero. How do we solve these problems? Well, there's two methods. And the first method is called the method of joints. Hippies. Right? It is not the method of joints that some of my college students think of. Okay? It does not have seven leaves. The method of joints is where you look at a joint, as in a place where things are joined together, not better living through chemistry, okay? It is a place where things are joined together, and we look at the forces acting on that joint, okay? So what I'm going to encourage you to do is let's look at A, okay? At A, the forces that are acting, we know... Well, actually, let's back up a sec. If all the loads are applied at the joints, what do we know about each of these little members? How many places are forces applied to the individual members? Oh, they're all two force members. Bingo! They're all two-force members, right? There's no loads applied to them except at their ends, so they're two-force members. So what does that tell us about the direction of the force in each of them? It's going along the line, of act, along the line right? So we know that... FAB is going to be up and to the left, and FAC is going to be uh, horizontal. Now, what is the other option if it's a two-force member? How else could FAC be acting? It could be acting that way, right? So it could just be acting in the opposite. What I've done is I've drawn it as if FAC is in tension, okay? Because it would be pulling on the pin at A. If member AC was in tension, meaning it's pull, it's being stretched, what A would experience then is it pulling away. If it were in compression, what would it look like? It'd be pushing. Okay. So when we draw these, we'll, doing the method of joints, actually pretty much any time, I'm going to encourage you to always draw them in tension. And then if you get a negative answer, you know it's in compression. 
all right? So if this is joint A, let's go to joint B, okay? So here's uh, joint B. What forces and how should I draw them? Where's FAB? Let's start with that one. Up and to the right? Down and to the left, right? Because it's pulling on B, right? If I drew it up and to the left, it would be in compression. It's pushing on B, okay? How about uh, FBC? Down and to the right? And FBD, horizontal, okay? All right with this, okay? We could do, uh, let's do D next. So at D, we'd have FBD going to the left and FDF going to the right. We'd have FDC down and to the left, FDE down and to the right. How many unknowns are there at this joint? There's four. How many unknowns are at this joint? Three. How many unknowns are at this joint? Two. Okay. Except actually probably we'd really want it. There'd be some normal here, right? There'd be some AY, right? And maybe some AX we could draw, right, because of the pin. What about over here, though? If we went to G. At G, I'm going to call it GY. Where would FGF, FGF be? Looks like we're doing disco in here. Up and to the left, right? F, G, F, and F, E, G, okay? Uh, that's my G, Y, okay? All right, so <clears throat> a couple things, right? Over here, we don't know A, Y, and we don't know A, X, but we can actually find them if instead of viewing this as a truss, For just a minute, we're going to view it as a beam, right? And this then, if this were a beam, we could solve for the reaction forces just like we did on the quiz, right? Just some of the forces in the X and the Y and some of the moments about a point will give us AX, AY, and GY, right? Everybody good with that? Can a joint uh, rotate? Can it spin? Can, how about this? Can a joint resist a moment? Probably shouldn't, right? Could one of these pins resist a moment? Is there any moment acting on any of the pins? How about that? There's no moment acting on any of the pins, right? Because we have all two force members. This line of action always acts through the points of connection. So there are no moments that, hap that occur on this. So if we have no moments, then <clears throat> uh, how many equations of equilibrium can we write for each joint? Two, right? Some of the forces in the x, some of the forces in the y. All right? So let's do this problem with some numbers, OK? I'm going to just draw the exact same thing again. I told you we're going to draw lots of bridges today, OK? So we're going to make this a three triangle bridge.
and let's make them uh, it three. No, I'm gonna change that. Let's make this six, six and six. And let's say it's four high. That's the total height. Okay. And we'll label it like we did before. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Okay. And... Let's put a load applied at C of 10 tons or 20 kip. And let's put a load at F of 5 kip. Okay. Everyone good with that? So now we can temporarily view this as a block and we can solve for our reactions, right? Our reaction A sub Y, our reaction A sub X, and our reaction G sub Y. Spoiler alert. What's A sub X going to be? Zero. Zero. How do we, how do you know that? Yeah, there's no forces in the X direction, so we're just going to say A sub X is zero. Okay. So then in the other directions, though, if we're viewing this, remember, for just a minute, we're just viewing it. We don't care about what's happening on the inside of the truss. We're going to view it as a giant beam, and we're going to sum the forces in the x direction. So it looks like I have a sub y minus 20 kip minus 5 kip plus gy. Sure is, thank you. Yep, that is supposed to be f of y. Okay, so two unknowns, one equation, got to go for another one, so let's sum the moments. We can choose whichever point, but let's choose a. Say counterclockwise is positive. Looks like I'll have minus 20 times 6 kip. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> minus 20 kip times 6 feet, right? Um, minus 5 kip times 6, 12, and half of 6 which is 3, so 15 feet, plus GY times 18 feet equals 0. So 20 times 6 is 120. Uh, 5 times 15 is 30, 60, 75. So it's 195 divided by 18, so it's going to be like 10.1. 10.83. Okay. So GY equals 10.83 kip. That makes AY equal to 14.17. Is that right? Right, so the way I did that, I summed the moments, figured out, okay, it's going to be 10.83 for GY. Then I can substitute that back into the first equation. 10.83 minus 25 is going to give me negative 14.7 or 17. So that's how I end up with 14.17. Okay.
We all good with that? So let's start our method of joints. Maybe I want to know, I'll do my given this, find loads in each member. All right? I just had a student yesterday, nope, day before yesterday, stop by uh, and ask. He's building a boom for a camera, and he was trying to figure out what the loads are in each of the members. He's like, could you help me do that? I'm like, I don't need to help you do that. You know how to do that, because you took this class. You can figure it out. It's just a simple truss, right? So we're going to do that right now, okay? So <clears throat> let's start at A. Draw our free body diagram at A. Method of joints. It's never going to get old, Travis. Okay, so F A C. Sounds like you have a lot of practice with it. F A B. Never inhale. And A Y, we know, right? What's A Y? 14.17 kippers. Right? You know, if I ever get a dog, I might name it Kip so that I'm a real engineer. What's your dog's name? Kip. Okay. Wow, man, that's heavy. <laughs> yeah. We're really channeling the 70s here. All right. Anything else happening at joint A? No. Nope. So let's write our equations of equilibrium. Some of the forces in the X equals zero. That way is positive. Does 14.17 have anything acting in the X? Yeah. Nope. Does FAC? Yeah. yeah. All of FAC is in the X. How about FAB? Yeah. Yeah. So plus... How much of FAB? Well, your instructor, he was thinking ahead on this problem. This would be 3 and 3, right? And if this is 3 and 4, that would be 5. Oh. Ding, ding, ding. We got a 3, 4, 5 triangle, everybody. Right? So the X component of it would be 3 fifths of FAB. Like that? Huh? Five. Equals zero. Can we solve this? Nope. Two unknowns, one equation. So we'll say sum of the forces in the Y has to equal zero. Looks like I've got 14.17 going up. Plus no FAC. So plus four fifths F A B equals zero. All right, so I can solve for F A B directly in this one. It's five times fourteen point one seven divided by four. F A B is going to be like twelve, maybe. No, it's going to be like eighteen. 17. I'm going to go with 17. What is it, Vlad? Don't leave me hanging. 17, 17 what? 17.71. 71? So let's say it's 17.7 kip. Which then if I know FAB, FAC is three-fifths of that. So it's going to be like uh, 10. Oh, good question. So is 17.7 kip positive or negative? It would be negative. This one's going to have to be negative, right? Okay, so then if I put negative 17.7 kip up here, FAC is positive, and what is it? 10.6. Well, crap, we got a negative answer. We must have done something wrong. No, not at all. Or yes, we did. What did we do wrong? Well, we drew FAB in the wrong direction. 
okay? Well, no, we drew it in the direction I told you to. What we found out is that FAB is equal to 17.7 kip in compression. And that FAC is equal to 10.6 kip in tension. Yeah, Brendan. Okay, so Brendan's asking, wouldn't all of the vertical ones be negative because the top is squeezing down? And I would say no, because look, right here, we've got 20 kip pulling it, right? So that guy could end up in tension. We don't know, though. I'm not very good at divining. You know, if you do this all day, every day, I'm, I bet you're going to be able to look at it and go, oh, compression, tension, 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 compression, just looking at it. I can't do that, right? So I just solve, I apply my process dumbly. Yep. I would. Yeah. Well, as long. <laughs> so the question is, whenever it's a negative sign, is it compression? Yes, if you follow my rule and always draw it as intention from the joints. Right. If you always draw it pulling away from the joint, then yes. If you get a negative answer, it means it's actually pushing on the joint, which means it's in compression. If you draw these and try and guess. Right, and you think, oh, I think that's going to be in compression, so I'm going to draw it the other way. Then you're hosed, right? So always draw it, whether you think it's in compression or not, always draw it in tension, because then it makes it super simple at the end to know whether it's in compression or tension, because if it's negative, it's in compression. Okay, So always draw it in tension. I'm going to say 90% of engineering is dumbly applying rules. Right? Like, and that's terrible because I'd actually say 90% of engineering is creativity or 90% of engineering is hard work or so, you know, but today 90% of engineering is dumbly applying rules. Okay? I'm going to reserve the right to change that later. Does this make sense so far? Can you then, let's see. Um, I'm going to just scoot this up, I guess, and pull some paper out underneath. And we're going to keep going on this here problem. All right. Let me see if I can zoom out a little bit so that we can see more of it. Yeah, that looks good. All right. So who wants to go to C next? Thank you, Victoria. I appreciate that. One person is willing to go to C. So let's go to C. Right. In the Navy. Oh, sorry. Wrong C. Ah, can I get a moment to get my C legs? Ooh, wow. Okay, so we just look at the joint. Okay, so here's my joint at C. How did I know to draw all the arrows pointing out of the joint? Because it's my rule, right? Because Andy told us so, right? That's the only reason you need is because we always draw them in tension. Or if you can't remember that, say, because you told me so, sir. Right? Okay? All right. So we've drawn them all that way. Uh, we would figured out, though... This would be FAC. Would you agree with me if we look at the picture? And we figured out what FAC was in the last problem. It was 10.6 kip in tension. So I could just replace this with 10.6 kip. No. Because it's in tension still. No. Nope. Nope. We're not talking about vectors right now. Tension always pulls away from a joint. And compression always pushes on the joint. So you're right that up here I have FAC going to the right, and we're calling it tension. That's because we're looking at joint A, and it's pulling on it, right? And this is joint C, and so it's also pulling there. Think of if you are 
there's two points here, A and C. Right? And you are falling and you're holding yourself up. You're experiencing tension in, on both arms, right? And you're pulling it in. <laughs> right? <laughs> when in doubt, actually this was a great, in graduate school, one of my professors that actually taught me a ton about engineering and what has actually made me more successful uh, was one of the things he taught me was visualize yourself as the problem you're trying, trying to solve. It was a class called ambidextrous thinking. And so he would have us act out like charades being the part that we were trying to design or to solve. It sounds goofy. It's not that exact thing that helps me be more successful, but it's helpful here, I think. Are you pushing on those or are you pulling on them? You're pulling on them, your intention, right? Okay. All right, so 10.6, what else do we have? We're going to have FBC. We don't know anything about FBC yet. We're going to have FBD. Don't know anything about that yet. Well, we don't know anything about its magnitude. We know tons about its direction, right? That'd be CD, sorry. FCD. And this is going to be FCE. And then we know we have 20 kip pulling down there. Everybody good with this? All right. How many unknowns do we have? Three. How many equations can we write? Three. Two. Three. Two. Whose idea was it to go to C? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. For I wanted to go to C so that you can see that it matters. No, you can totally do this. This is still, all this still applies. This is all true. But can you solve it right now? No. So this isn't the next step we need to take, right? So if we go to B, let's go to B instead, okay? So if we go to B, um, here's joint B. We know that we've got... Uh, This is where it's going to get tricky. I'm going to draw this one first. FBC, FBD, right? And now I know from my analysis here, I know FAB, right? It was negative 17.7 kip. So that means it's in compression. So when I come to draw it here, since I know something about it, there's two ways you can do this. I'm going to encourage you to use the way that works for you. I won't tell you which way to do it. I would typically choose to draw my arrow pointing towards the dot and give it a positive magnitude of 17.7. Okay. The other option would be if you did something like this, where you said FBD, FBC, and then kept it in tension, 17.7, but gave it a negative value, right? These two things say the same thing. This one, I think, is easier not to screw up when you write your equations of equilibrium. Because now, when I say, and I'm, so I'm going to use this one, when I say some of the forces in the x has to equal 0, I just say, oh, well, that is, uh, in the horizontal, I'm going to have 3 fifths times 17.7 plus 3 fifths FBC, right? Because we're talking in the x direction, plus FBD equals 0. So now I don't have to monkey around with whether 17.7 is positive or negative or what it means. I just follow the direction of my arrow because I knew to draw this in compression, meaning it's pushing on the joint. Okay. And then I can write my second equation. Sum of the forces in the y direction equals 0. 
looks to me like that is going to be the only thing happening in the y is 4 fifths times 17.7 uh, .7 minus 4 fifths times f b c equals 0. What's FBC? 17.7. Okay. Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. So is FBC in compression or in tension? Tension. Okay. Okay, so we found uh, so far in this section, I'm going to just, I like blue best today. FBC, we have found to be 17.7 kip. What does that mean for FBD? Is it zero? No, it's three fifths of 17.7 plus three fifths of 17.7. Negative 21.2 kip, right? Because all these guys are positive. The way I have this drawn is that everything is in the positive x direction, right? That can't be true. Something has to be in the negative, and it turns out that it's FBD. So FBD is 21.2 kip, negative, or we could say positive 21.2 kip in compression. No, right? So uh, Carson wants to know if the similar parts of the trusses are going to have the same magnitude each time, and no, they won't. Sometimes they will. In a symmetric truss, they might, but this guy isn't symmetric and it's loading. Right? Okay? All right, so now, should we go to C? Yeah. Now we can go to C because we figured out that FBC was 17.7 kip in tension. So we've drawn it correctly here, 17.7. So now I can sum my forces in the X, set that equal to 0. So I'm going to let you do that. I'm going to move my paper so you can't see me do it, and I want you to do it, and we'll compare notes in a minute, okay? Hopefully you got something like this. F of x equals 0, so negative 10.6. Not because it's in compression, but because I'm saying x is positive to the right. So minus 10.6, minus 3 fifths, 17.7. Again, not because it's in compression, but because it's to the left. Plus 3 fifths, FCD, plus FCE equals 0. Then I have to sum the forces in the y direction. 4 fifths, 17.7, plus 4 fifths, FCD, minus 20, gives me 0. You want to get something like this? And when you solved it, what did you get for uh, FCD? 
7.3 kip. And how about FCE? 16.8 kip. Both positive? So that means they're both in tension. Right? So let's see you do joint D. Joint D. I'd like you to draw the free body diagram of joint D, and we'll come back and compare that, okay? So you do the free body diagram of joint D, and then we'll look at it together. So this is what my free body diagram looks like. Why is my 21.2 going to the right? Because it's in compression. Okay. So I have two unknowns, so I should be able to dive in and solve this. So I'll give you some time to do that. So these are what my equations of equilibrium look like. Uh, is it 21.2 or 21.7? Point two. Sorry. There you go. 21.2. So you can see by inspection that it looks like FDE is what? Negative 7.3 kip or 7.3 kip in compression. Yep. So it's pushing at E. And how about up here? Anyone get FDF then? Excuse me? Yeah, negative 12.44. Mm -hmm. 12.44. So that's plus 12.44 kip in compression. Okay. Let's step back for a second and see if this makes sense in our head. If we're at D and there's a load pulling really hard here and pushing really hard here, what's the bridge trying to do? Like if, if this is the bridge, and this is the top, this is the bottom, and I'm loaded uh, like that, I think the bridge is trying to do this, right? It's trying to buckle in the middle. So then you would want FDF and FDE, they're going to be in compression counteracting that. Okay, so they're being pushed, right? Where they're pushing against the pins, making that not happen. All right, so now we have... FDE, FDF, FCE, FCD, right? We're getting there. We're halfway through the truss at this point. Yes, Brendan. When are these questions go A, B, C, and go D, uh, No, yeah, I mean, it's six of one, half a dozen of another. So Brendan's asking, wouldn't it be quicker to go A, B, C, and then go G, F, E, D? It's all the same, well, right? What I'm saying is once you get to the E, then we'll just know D. And once you get to F, then we'll know G. Yeah, but D is only two trusses and D is four. Yeah, good point. So, so, math. so Brendan's point is that if we kind of never did D by doing A, B, C, G, F, E, we'd end up knowing D without ever having to do this joint with four in it. Yeah, but, yeah. This joint has three in it, that one has three in it, and that one has three in it, so it's... Yeah, it's, you're still only solving for two unknowns, right? Every time. So it doesn't change it, but you're welcome to do it that way. It works that way as well. Okay, so let's, let's go to E. So at E... It looks like we've got forces like this, F, E, G, F, E, F. We have F, D, E, which we just found to be in compression, so I drew this the wrong way, right? It's in compression. 
and it is 7.3 and we had FCE from up here it's 16.8 in tension so it is this way okay so let's sum the forces in the X say they're equal to 0 looks like I'll have minus 16.8 because it's in compression it's in the negative x direction this is point e sorry it's just kind of my top ones up there plus uh, three-fifths 7.3 plus three-fifths FEF plus F E G equals zero. Some of the forces in the Y looks like I'll have minus four fifths seven point three plus four fifths F E F equals zero. What did we just find out? F E F equals what? 7.3 kip. Right? Look at this equation. Therefore, FEG can be like eight. Right, so they're both in tension. And now we have a choice to make, right? We could either go to F or we could go to G. Um, I'm going to go to F. Seems like fun. So at F, my free body diagram will be... Uh, we figured out FDF, and it was 12.44 in compression, so it's actually going to be going this way. 12.44, okay, then I'll have uh, F, F, G, and we figured out F, E, F above was 7.3 in tension, so it's going to be 7.3 this way. So we only have one unknown to solve here. Oh, I'm missing something, right? I'm missing my 5 kit. Some of the forces in the X, zero. So it looks like I'll have 12.44 plus 3 fifths F sub FG uh, minus 3 fifths of 7.3 equals zero. And in the Y, Looks like I'll have, uh, gosh, lots of negative stuff. Minus 4 fifths times 7.3 minus 5 minus 4 fifths F sub FG. Equals zero. This one right here? Why is this positive? Because it's going to the right. I'm just looking at the x direction, so the component of this is going that way. It's all right.
So solving these has gotten a lot simpler, right, as far as the actual maths. What's gotten more complicated, I guess we only needed one equation, huh? Hopefully both these equations give us the same thing. <laughs> what do you get for FFG? Yeah, good, good eye. Jordan says, look, it's got to be negative because that's negative, that's negative, and that's negative. So this one's going to have to be negative to be positive. So it's, we know it's in compression. Good eye, Jordan. What else do we get? Nice, Vlad. You got 13.5? Okay, 13.5 in compression. All right? That is one method of joints problem. I'd like you to go home and do three more method of joints problems. Okay? And then on Friday, uh, we'll talk about zero force members and we'll look at the other method of doing these problems. Yeah, Carson.